Hey there brothers and sisters, it's Timothy here and today I'm going to do something different. I'm doing a book review and the reason I wanted to actually start doing book reviews is because books really are a beautiful middle ground between uh, consuming and creating because you're absorbing what's on the pages but you're also creating with your mind as you read whereas when you're absorbing TV, YouTube, anything like that, like this video, you're just pure input and there's no, there's not there's not that um, there's not a dance going on in your mind between the input and the output, you know. And the hardest part of books, often I find, is finding a good book that you enjoy. Uh, and but uh, lately, I've been on quite a good roll, actually. <laughs> so I thought I'd share some of the books that I've been enjoying with you. If it's not for you, that's cool, you know. That that's all right. But I feel like some of the people that are still around on this channel that still uh, kind of value what I want to share, these, these books might, you know, tick that box for you. So. This book today is called Judas of Kerioth, and that's right, it is Judas from the Bible, one of the most reviled man, man, men in history, and it's a channeled book from Judas, who is now in the spirit world, obviously, um, and has channeled this book, written in the 21st century, in 2000, 2001, <laughs> by a, a channel who wants to remain anonymous, now, I understand that for some people that might be completely fictitious and they might think it's completely made up. There's something to mediumship that I've been appreciating for quite a few years now. So if you are into, um, you were into Abraham Hicks, Bashar, Barbara Marciniak, Cryon, or any of the other Palladian channeled stuff, you, you've been down with that stuff, which I've, I've enjoyed a lot of that stuff in the past. This book, for me, finding now, mo kind of moving on from the channeled videos on YouTube and talks to, to more channeled books, has been quite has been quite a fun actually it's been quite fun and so it there is a beautiful middle ground where it's where it feels like it's between fact and fiction where it's telling stories that it is saying are true but because it's channeled it allows room for that little bit of fun of make believe even though even though i actually think it it feels quite factual it's enjoyable to read something that's factual that's actually quite fringe if that makes sense and i i do think that and I've talked about this concept on the podcast recently, was that is that the mind should be like an airlock for ideas, that you should be free to explore an idea in your mind. And that, that's not a challenge on your on your heart, your beliefs, your soul. You can explore something. I think there's a, a really a quote I've quoted before, but it's the mark of an educated man to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. And I think that's what, with stuff like this, right now, when times are crazy and, and I don't feel like there's much truth coming through the mainstream societal realms as should be because that's, that's serving us that maybe we need to look for truth that's going to serve us towards health and happiness and love in the fringe in the, in the alter in the alternate realm so this book kind of came to me i think actually divine truth may have mentioned it or I, I, you know on my roll of books when you get to the end of a book sometimes you see another book recommended on amazon or whatever actually i really like my kindle um, and often the, the books recommend on that so I think actually normally I buy books on a Kindle and then if I really like it I'll buy it in paperback or hardcover but I, somehow I bought this anyway I wasn't going to read it and it was just sat by my bed and one day I just thought pick it up and just choose a page I like doing that with the book right choose a page and read and I chose a, a random page and I started to read and I, I ended up reading the chapter and the chapter was only about two and a half pages long and it turns out that all the chapters in here are about two to five pages long and each of them are on a really precise subject that Judas cho chose to channel on in that moment. So some of the themes that are covered within this book is obviously what you kind of would want to know in the book channel from Judas is what happened with Jesus, why he you know sort of betrayed Jesus, what he did in that instance, what was the truth of that matter from this book's perspective. Um, his suicide after he betrayed Jesus, he committed suicide so what happened once he crossed over after after his suicide, he crossed over to the spirit world, ended up in the hells, um, and his journey of the story of being in the hells for however long he was there for, and his journey out of the hells, obviously two thousand years later or just under, yeah, under two thousand years later, he's obviously out of the hells. He's in the celestial realms now, and that's where he's channeling this book from. Um, but that kind of story of his own personal journey of repentance through that that process. Um, it's got a lot of the stories of the lost years of Jesus, so from, I can't remember what year it stops in the Bible, between some year and 26 AD, there's a lot of lost years, there's a lot of stories in this, going through a lot of a lot of that stuff, 
his Jesus' relationship with his father, S stories about the miracles which are true, which are not true, or what really happened. There's also a lot of focus around divine love and prayer and, and the the key the keys essentially to soul development it talks which is a good theme to have in any of these books i think and it references a lot of the times the pageant messages for those that know that but those books the urantia books i'm not sure you pronounce it urantia which i haven't read yet but i think i might move on to them next and obviously references the bible quite a lot just so you can see some of the chapters here so it kind of intros into it Talks spiritual awareness, guides and guardian angels, automatic writing, law of divine love, um, Judas experience in the hells, Islam and Muhammad. Talks about the spheres. So, for those that know this, the spirit world contains different spheres, and your condition of your soul or your soul development determines the height of the, the number of the sphere that you can get into. And it goes through all the spheres. 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, up until Celestial Realms. Jesus marries Mary, returns to Bethlehem. The Essenes, Dead Sea Scrolls. John the Baptist as a child. Faith, building harmony with humility. Distortions of history. It's got some good parables of Jesus, footprints in the sand. Um, Nathaniel, his first disciple. Zebedee, meeting Simon Peter, meeting Matthew. Um, the political situation in 26 AD goes through some of the history there. Healing of the leper, what really happened in the healing of the leper. Samaritan goes through some parables. Truth and false beliefs. Trust in God. Pilate takes charge, yeah. The world of the child. Mary Magdalene. So it's got a, a lot of really... When I looked at the chapters list, and they're all short chapters I was just like those are subjects I yeah I find I find interesting to, to if, if you're on this journey of trying to piece together the thread of the truth of history to now how we really find like I say health and happiness in in any time of history of then and now of humanity you know one of the things I really like about the Kindle is you can highlight strong sentences or paragraphs as you're going something that's like oh that's powerful and I like I love to do that as I go I just exported them to my computer and from this book there was 36 pages <laughs> of of notes that I'd done and they're all like one sentence or one paragraph at a time so and I, and as I started to go through I wanted to share a few paragraphs with you uh, or a, th a few sentences from the book but I got to page 8 and I wanted to just share so much I was like, I need to stop looking so I've, here's just a few as we, as we go, um, but there's a Judas on his repentance. The day had come when I could get rid of the idea of blaming Jesus for everything. When I could see my guilt and when I repented, it hurt tremendously, it broke my heart and I wept for a long time. I isolated myself. This is in the spirit world, he's isolated himself. I no longer wanted to meet my neighbors and I spent my days in deep pain. It was then when Andrew, from the Bible, during one of his many visits, drew my attention to the fact that I looked different now. So that just is Judas speaking to repentance and how he actually felt the sincere remorse for what he'd done to Jesus, and that Andrew came to and said, "Look at your your body, your spirit body is it looks different now." And so your spirit body shows a mu apparently sh your spirit body shows a much clearer image of the truth, true nature of your soul condition. And so this is Andrew just letting him know, oh, because of your repentance, this spiritual law that's at play, your soul condition has improved because you truly felt remorse for it and therefore your spirit body has changed. So as he said, he drew my attention to the fact that I'd look different now. So I thought that was a cool uh, to learn about the law of repentance in, in the spirit world and how Judas actually, you know, that's him actually in a moment sharing that he, he felt bad. One of the most hated men in history, probably, you know. Another, another one on the, the soul's innate desire for God. This is something I've felt lately as a lot of life, I never felt satisfaction with much of life and achieving success and all the main areas you're supposed to go for success in and yet never felt truly satisfied. And I've kind of worded it. I've said everyone has a, a God-shaped hole in their heart, uh, whether they're aware of it or not. And maybe that's a bit of a harsher way of saying it than, than this paragraph it says, 
Our soul has the innate our soul has the innate desire to find God and man cannot dis suppress this desire forever. In the seemingly eternal battle between soul and the material mind, the soul will prove stronger. And that's something I feel like I've experienced and if you've started a relationship with God, you may have experienced it if you haven't and you're feeling dissatisfied with life, that could be the reason that there's an innate desire to find God in all of us. And the final set of quotes before I got to page 8 out of 36 and didn't want to make this whole thing an hour long of quotes um, about harmony, two types of harmony and I, I like the subject of harmony so I wish to talk about harmony in fact there are two forms of harmony absolute harmony and relative harmony everything which is in harmony with God and His will is in absolute harmony and whatever is in harmony with its own environment is in relative harmony the law of compensation operates on the tension caused by the lack of absolute harmony. So the law of compensation is like karma, essentially. So if there's a lack of absolute harmony, so environmental harmony, then you will feel the karmic imprint of that. The painful principle, that is to say, the unpleasant environment and the vivid recollections which force the spirits to face all that they have done and thought is the same for all. So it's just saying the, the, print, the principle of the law of compensation, the law of karma, is to do with being out of harmony. I think, I guess we kind of all know that, but I like, for me, this re I always relates stuff to the body and it's the same with the body. Um, if there's tension in an area of the body, as it says, the law of compensation operates on the tension caused by lack of absolute harmony. If there's tension in the body caused by lack of natural alignment with posture, then the painful principle, then you're going to feel it. So you'll feel it karmically, the law of compensation, if your soul has acted out of harmony with love or with the environment. So your body, you have tension, it's not in natural alignment yet. So it's like the, the physical, it's in the, the micro and the macro in a way. And then finally, uh, about the law of love. This is why all you do in harmony that is in love improves the situation of all mankind. It has not only a positive effect on yourselves, furthering your soul development and the positive effect on your immediate environment no, it goes way beyond this. Each action or thought out of harmony is like a grain of sand in a precision gearing and things won't run smoothly anymore. So it's just saying the importance of acting in harmony with love and loving principles and that everything you do not only has a positive effect on yourself and the environment around you, but yeah, furthering your soul development and beyond that. And so everything that you do is out of harmony is like a grain of sand in gearing, which is a, a pretty harsh but nice way to put it. Oh yeah, there's, I didn't realise I put one more quote in, and that talk, is just talking about sexuality in the spirit world, just to give a v variety of things that it talks about. But in spirit life, sexuality disappears. Sexuality is one of the main factors determining the bonds with earth. And as I have already said, it is precisely in the fourth sphere where these bonds disappear. This disappearance of one of the preconditions is one of the preconditions for additional spiritual progress. What remains is pure love. So that just talks about something maybe to expect in the fourth sphere, as I talk about the different spheres, just to touch on it, most of the earth is in currently existing in the first sphere condition. So at the fourth sphere in the spirit world, sexuality disappears and what remains is pure love. And I thought that was quite cool. Some of the chapters from the book, some of the theme of the book, some of the um, quotes that I like from the book, from that brief, <laughs> I could have gone on and on. So any gripes, confusions, disagreements with the book that I felt. Um, my only question that I came out of it with really is, because it's, it's pretty clear and it's not, there's no, it doesn't feel like there's an agenda in the book. It doesn't, it's just a lot of theme of how to be more loving and uh, you know, and just great stories of Jesus and the parables of Jesus, and it just makes it feel, sometimes the Bible can feel a bit too, um, I don't know if flamboyant's the right word, but it, it can feel too, um, you know, and it, the language it's translated is from, went from Aramaic to Greek to English, there's a lot of lost in translation, it's been edited, you know, over thousands of years by a lot of men with their own agendas and stuff like that, whereas to have something from the 21st century written in modern English with stories correcting or confirming what's in the bible and what isn't it's just nice to have that other perspective but the only question or confusion i had with the book was there's a few messages there that were channeled supposedly from jesus now for me i believe jesus is actually alive and teaching and i know that might be sound crazy or you think i'm nuts for saying that whatever but you know that's that's for you to explore for, i'm exploring 
Um, I think he's teaching right now. If he's alive on earth, how is he channeling in the 21st century from then? I, I don't know. I, I like to investigate this. I like to add, ask those questions. So if that is the case, uh, maybe he split his soul before reincarnation and he still exists in the spirit world and the physical world. I don't know how the mechanics work of the spirit mechanics, soul mechanics at that level. One option. Uh, it could be a spirit pretending to be him, although the message seemed loving with no agenda. It seemed pretty Jesus-like, if I can say that. <laughs> So I don't know, it could be the author maybe desired it to be Jesus and wanted to believe it was him because I think that's how mediumship, the me mechanics of mediumship can work sometimes um, is if the medium has their own emotional kind of neediness or something that they, they may believe, want to believe that something's happening that's not actually happening with the spirit. It could be that, I don't know. Or it was him and the Jesus I believe is alive and teaching on earth isn't that Jesus, though I've never seen someone teach on earth of all the deep dive spiritual stuff I've gone into. I haven't seen someone teach with the that the depth and understanding of love and the precise understanding of the mechanics of the soul that this man teaches with. Um, and I know that's that's just my perspective. That's not going to prove anything to anyone. That's just what the way I see it. I don't think I've seen anyone that embodies... Um, lives with the embodiment of like integrity and his commitment to truth and even his humility in the face of naysayers and intense ad hominem attacks on his character um he still holds his holds his like ground in his own like sovereign being and remains loving in the face of all this and is and you know I've, i know people that have and spoken with people that have been and stayed with him for extended periods of time or not stayed with him but um worked on on environmental projects with him and spent time around him that just you know doesn't seem like any other human that's alive than teaching right now so whether this man is or isn't jesus you know that that's definitely a discussion that needs its you know more of its own consideration and, and a topic for another time and um but whether or not he isn't the truth is i don't know 100 percent certain that he is but equally to that someone that may want to choose to dismiss him doesn't know for 100% certain that he isn't. And if we start at that point of truth that we don't know either way, and then we can go, okay, we'll put that to the side and we'll just focus on the other stuff, what we can, what's he teaching. But like I say, that's a discussion for another, for another time. I do think Divine Truth have mentioned this book, but I'm not really sure what they say on the matter of you know him channeling Jesus through that. And there could be other options that I've not thought of. So I'll just leave it open-ended for now. I don't need to know. I take what I take from the book that feels loving or fulfilling to me spiritually. And I'll leave the rest as, okay, questions I have. Maybe I'll get answered in the, in the future. So in closing, what I've done here is I've given the book a rating out of 10. I'm not so sure <laughs> with the concept of rating something because it's so subjective. And, and I wouldn't share a book if I didn't feel like it was worth reading. But that, of course, depends on your, your persuasion. And for me... If you're into spirituality and you value the story of Jesus and the potential power of relationship with God and want to understand that a bit better, how to work on that a bit better, I've given this book a 9.5 out of 10. I've, I enjoyed it, like really enjoyed it so much. Um, it literally felt like almost like a, a equal equivalent to the Bible, like to read alongside the Bible. When looking and discovering and working out truth, you have to look at things like you're looking at a, st a statue. You don't just look at it from the front, right? 2D, it's just a 2D. You want to look around the back, you want to look at all the details, look in the nooks and crannies. And I feel like this gave me, you know, regardless of the source or not, or truth or not, like, it gave me, uh, it made me feel like the story of Jesus and the Bible and all that thing, it gave a more 3D perspective of that. Of that, And if you're just locked into, I can only read this one book and all truth is in this one book and nowhere else, I think you're going to back yourself into a, into a corner. And the fact that that's, you know, what source, how can we say what source is more reliable? Something that was written thousands of years ago that's translated through time, through written, changed by, th you know, hundreds of men along the way with their own agendas or a book that was written, you know, 20 years ago by a medium that channeled from Judas. Like, equally have their own, you know... <laughs> strengths and weaknesses like if you're looking at it from a neutral playing field so it gave me you look at you know how do you triangulate truth is you need two perspectives third eye perspective 
if you just look at something with direct vision, you're not going to see the whole image. So for me, this kit, this is a really good counterpart to looking at the story of Jesus for anyone. And I think you have to acknowledge that the truth is stranger than fiction in the world. Like, look around, this is a crazy world, and everything that we believe is truth, if we take the, is it serving us to be healthier and happier as the hallmark for is it in aligned with harmony of truth and love? Well, I don't feel like we're getting close to being healthier and happier as a society. So therefore, everything that's being fed there, a lot of what's being fed there, mentally, educationally, spiritually, is is a, leaving a lot of gaps open because it's the rule of nature, man. If you don't feel something, something else will come in and take over, and, and that's what is happening right now. You've got to believe in your own power of discernment and that you can investigate stuff and you can deem what's safe to investigate. You don't need the society to decide, oh no, ignore that because that's, you know, it's, it's up to you. Believe in your own power of discernment. Your mind's there as a tool for a reason and if you're into spirituality, I think this is a must read. So, Godspeed.